This is the first video in a series on navigation. Today we're going to introduce you to charts, and we're also going to show you how to swing your compass so that you know that you have accurate readings. In this video, I'm going to be using the free navigation software program called OpenCPN. I highly recommend it. You can download it at opencpn.org. Not only is OpenCPN free software, but also you have the ability to download free charts. We'll be downloading the U.S. government NOAA charts, and they will be the equivalent of paper charts, so you have a total solution for the beginning navigator. Let me very quickly and briefly show you how to download charts. First you click on the wrench, which is the settings, and then you click on charts. Then you will need to add a directory for where you're going to put your charts, and then you can click on the chart downloader. Click the add button, and then click on the little plus sign that's in front of the line that says USA hyphen NOAA and inland charts. This will reveal two other little lines, one that says RNC and one that says ENC. ENC is for electronic charts and we're going to save that for another day. Right now we're going to concentrate on the RNC, which is for the raster or the equivalent of paper charts. And then you can choose which groups of charts you would like to download by state, and then I'm going to pick California. Check and make sure that the directory that the charts are going to go into is correct, and then click OK. Click on the line that says RNC Products. This should be the only line that you see if you have a brand new installation. Then click on the Update button. Once the file is updated, you should see a list of all the charts. If this is a new installation, they will all be checkmarked. So just click the Download Selected Charts button and go get a cup of coffee while they download. And then when they're all done, you can click OK. With the charts installed, so click on the wrench, which is your options or settings. So then go down to the tabs and next to the general, you want to click on units. So the first thing we do is we look down at the longitude and latitude and we want to set that to be degrees, comma, digital minutes. This is the standard for most of your chart plotters, so we will leave it set there. I also like to double check the box that says show magnetic bearings and headings. This will also be useful as you will see shortly. If naval charts are new to you, they may look a little intimidating. However, they're actually quite simple. The best way to learn them is by doing. So we're going to come up with a system that we will be able to check to see if our compass is reading correctly. The way we're going to do this is by setting up what's called a range. We will find two objects that will be on shore that when lined up one on top of the other, we'll be able to get a, a bearing, a direction that we can check on the chart and then we can check on the compass and know how they're set the same or if there's a difference. Clicking on the plus magnifier in the upper left hand corner or by using the scroll wheel, we can zoom in closer. As we do this, you will notice that the charts are changing as OpenCPN automatically selects the best chart for that magnification. When you look at the chart, you will notice that there are circles with dots in them. As I zoom in, you can see this one has an abbreviation BLDG next to it, which means it's a building. Now, that can be often difficult to identify when you're out at sea, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the pointer right on the center dot, and then we can read the GPS coordinates for that location down here at the bottom of the screen. Now we need to find a second object that we will be able to line up with this first building that we've just identified. Here is a tower that's 338 feet tall. That should work very well. Once again, we'll put the pointer right on the center of the dot and look at the GPS coordinates down here at the bottom. We'll use the GPS coordinates in a moment, but first we want to create a route using the routing tool, which is a little zigzag line. And then we'll click on the center dot for the building. And then we'll slide across and click again on the center dot for the tower. Now you have to press the escape key in order to stop the routing function. Put the mouse pointer anywhere on the route line and it will reveal a little yellow box that gives you lots of information. The important one for us right now is the bottom line and the first number, which is the 
angle the degrees for the route, which as you can see is 75 degrees, and notice the M, which stands for magnetic. Our next step is to identify the building and the tower using Google Earth Pro. Google Earth Pro is a free program and you can download it from Google. Click on the tools and then on options and then go down and make sure that the degrees and digital minutes is checked so this will match what we set up in OpenCPN. Now I'm typing in the GPS coordinates into the search box. The GPS coordinates are typed in exactly as they were listed on OpenCPN. Notice how Google Earth zooms in directly on the object. Now, we can change the angle and the zoom so we can get a better look at this building by clicking on that little circle up in the upper right hand corner. And we can also use the scroll wheel to zoom in closer so that we can get a really good look at the building and be able to identify it. I'm also holding the mouse button down and dragging in order to move the image around. And now I'm going to type in the GPS address for the tower that we had found earlier. And Google Earth will automatically move over to the tower. Now once again, I will use the scroll wheel and click on the dials and drag around so we can take a good look at the tower. With the image of the building and the tower freshly in our head, we can head out to sea and when we look back on shore, it becomes quite obvious where the building and the tower are. As the tower slowly moves behind the building, I will wait until all I can see is just the top of the tower right above the flagpole in the center of the building. Then we're gonna turn sharply and head towards the building and tower. It's very difficult to line it up precisely because you want the mast and the jib to be right on the same line. So you have to kind of look on each side of the mast back and forth. When you're confident that you have the boat aligned with the tower and the building, then you can look down and check your compass reading. I see mine is 75 degrees, which agrees perfectly with the route that we determined on OpenCPN. Spinning the boat 180 degrees, we attempt to sail in the opposite direction, which can be very difficult for the helmsman to see. So I find a place on the center line of the boat and give the helmsman direction by Sighting over the center of the wheel, I can see very clearly which way we are pointed. Compass deviation can be caused by many factors. However, the most likely is the engine block. And it is usually ahead of or behind the compass. And that's why we want to try going in two different directions at least. It would be even better to go in many more directions, but we will save that for another video. With the tower and the building aligned once again, we take a reading from the compass, and you'll notice it says 255, which is exactly 75 plus 180. So our compass is reading once again exactly what we would expect. In the next video, we will continue learning to read charts. We will also do a practical demonstration that will aid you in your learning of navigation. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share, like, subscribe, and give me a thumbs up if you can. I appreciate it. Thank you.